Now, Mongolia has seen an infrastructure boom in recent years, partly due to Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. Mining is the lifeblood of Mongolia's economy, making up about a quarter of its GDP. But now it is also looking to diversify its economy. CNE's Olivia Xiong reports. It's been nine years since this Mongolian food production company started shipping its milk powder across the border to neighboring China. And now it's looking to break the ice once again. How much ice cream is produced here? Every yeah, day? it's produced for 500,000 to 700,000 per day. That's for a domestic market and the export market, we are starting. That's a lot of ice cream. Yeah, a lot of ice cream. This August, the company started exporting its ice cream to China in hopes of tapping the large 1.4 billion people market. Also, as it's benefited from an infrastructure boom in Mongolia, with more railways and roads being built in recent years. This is even though much of the infrastructure has been focused on increasing the country's mining exports to China, also part of Beijing's massive Belt and Road infrastructure plan. Mongolia has one main railroad that runs from Russia to China through the center of the country and the capital, Ulaanbaatar. But a new branch line was built in just eight months, touted as a new gateway for transporting Mongolia's mining minerals into China. It's part of about 900 kilometers of new rail lines that were built and put into operation last year alone. Well, we've been talking to the railway staff here and they tell us that this train is carrying rocks that will be used to build roads here. Also, some of the carriages are still empty because this train is headed towards a mine to pick up coal to be transported. Just amazing how much is happening out here in the Gobi Desert. But Mongolia is hoping to diversify its economy beyond its mining sector and to beyond just China. Analysts say Mongolia has potential to become an energy transit corridor with a new gas pipeline in the works running from Russia to China through the country. There's also potential in tourism and the renewable energy sector. Mongolia has a vast land area and 300 sunny days per year, something which Mongolia's government has been looking at how to monetize and export. Mongolia's connectivity both towards the Far East, Japan, uh, Korea, perhaps even North Korea, uh, but also to the West and to the uh, markets uh, uh, west of Kazakhstan, European markets. It's a great opportunity for Mongolia. If they can get the policies right, out of all of that region of the Far East, Mongolia is a country that has the least amount of conflicts. Everyone else has border disputes. Mongolia doesn't. So uh, geopolitically, it's, it's managed to position itself very well. But beyond product development and distribution, there are more challenges to overcome to break into a new market. That's why those like 24-year-old Anudari are in demand. The undergraduate at a Chinese university in Hangzhou is on what's known as a Silk Road scholarship offered by the Chinese government. The communications engineering major also thinks this stint will put her in good stead after she graduates. It's estimated that 10,000 government scholarships are given out by China to students along the Belt and Road each year. Olivia Xiong, CNA, Ulaanbaatar.